am I supposed to know? If you work, you won't ring. Hello? Hello? My doorbell worked. <laughs> Magic finger. Happy housewarming. Come in. Thank you. Yes, oh. happy housewarming. Oh, wow. Me? Yes, it yeah. is. Just a few traditional things. We have a loaf of bread. That you shall never be hungry. We have a penny. That you shall never be poor. We have a bottle of wine. That Ooh. you will never be thirsty. I like that. <laughs> and we have a plant. Oh, never to be without something to kill, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <gasps> oh, I've never heard of this tradition, but this is great. I would try a penny for every place I'd ever lived. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm. Julia, what are you doing? Contemplating suicide. Well, put away your samurai sword and close your eyes. Are your eyes closed? Yes, forever. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Julia. Happy birthday. To you. Ah! Well, I would have gone all the way with the candles, but they're only 25 in a bunch. <laughs> Aren't you going to make a wish? Never mind, I'll make it for you. Uh... <coughs> Thanks. Happy birthday, Julia. That's nice. Thank you. Now, I can't tell you what I wished, but somebody may ring that doorbell and it would behoove you to look the best you can. Oh, darling, don't mope. Now, I think that's a lovely photograph. I just don't know why they had to leave Mason in it. It's lovely, just lovely. Well, I should be the one complaining. They omitted the courageous citizen who apprehended the weasel. You're right. I should cut it out and put it in my scrapbook. That way, when Samantha's old enough, she can have the fond memory of Mommy putting Daddy in jail. Oh, don't be silly. When Samantha's old enough to understand, she can visit him. Well, what are you blaming me for? Because the whole thing is your damn fault. Keep it down. Just get her out of the house, Sonny. I'll take care of the rest, Sonny. Yeah, and it would have gone fine if it weren't for you. You botched the whole thing. But what the hell was I supposed to do? I said keep it down. Well, you weren't supposed to walk back in while I was trying to explain the whole thing to Augusta. Are you too deaf? Shut up yourself. Look, forget that. That was yesterday. This is today. The court date's already been set. I ask you politely to... Wait a minute. Excuse me. I didn't realize we were being so loud. Did you, Gina? But, uh -uh. but we'll quiet. I've got a nice Louis L'Amour to read, so I'll just go right... Hey. You know, I know you. You used to be D.A. You were the one who put me away. No. No, see, there's two of us. We do look a lot alike, uh -uh, but that wasn't uh -uh. me. It was you. No, no, no. You see, he was D.A. at that time, but I wasn't even in the country. Barcelona, Spain, that's where I was. That's right, I was with him. I ask her, she knows. What are you worried about, huh? Huh? I deserved it. No, no, I'm sure it was just a big mistake. Hey, I'm back here, ain't I? I had it coming. I robbed a stupid liquor store and shot some dude in the foot. Well, yeah, I guess you could say technically that's against the law. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I was rooting for you the whole trial. You had, a, you had a way about you. Inspiring. Very. I saw the light. I paid my debt to society. But then... Uh, <laughs> well, what can I say? I went out and I got into debt again. Huh? The flesh is weak, you know. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do know. You still dress with the best. Uh, Sonny? Sonny? What are you in for? Well, actually, actually it's not even a criminal thing. More like an, more like an ethics issue. Yeah, a morals thing. Huh? Yeah, you could say that. No, 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 no. That's not it at all. You know what I think would make us the uh, best of friends? Well, you just name it. Uh, Mr. Capwell, I think we better talk. Sonny! 
I like you better without the muff. Beg pardon? Smooth skin. Ah. I like that. Well, actually, if you look real close, I got nice scars. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Just like my wife. Now, you listen. You're gonna need some protection. Once the neighbors find out who you've been, you know what I mean? Hmm? But don't you worry now. Don't worry. I ain't gonna let them touch you. I mean, uh, you got your dignity. Would you excuse me for just a minute? I think it is absolutely perfect for you. Do you know, your brother found this place for me. Really? Yeah. Well, aren't you just God's gift to single women? Oh! Wait. <laughs> the door. I'll get it it's eventually. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late. I didn't even know you were coming. Well, happy housewarming. Oh, Scotty, it's beautiful. It looks like a sculpture. Well, it's not. So why don't you put these in? Don't you just love it? I could never sleep on these. What if I drool? Those are not sheets, you dodo. That's eight and a half yards of the most divine jacquard that ever was. And that's only half of it. The other half is that you have an appointment with Richard at Franco's to turn that into your dream dress. Now, I know you don't dream of dresses, but this one you will dream about. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate it. I've never... Uh... Well, I've done anything like that before. Well, I know. That is half your problem. <sighs> Where will I wear it? Oh, would you stop this routine about drooling and being a worn-out housefrau? You are a divine, fabulous, very, very chic bachelorette. Bachelorette? Oh, do shut up and have some champagne. No, thanks. None for this bachelorette. Are you trying to ruin this birthday party for me? It's my party, and I'll cry if I want to. <gasps> Julia, I am here to help you. To, to, to help you with whatever you desire. But, of course, you don't know what you desire, so I'm going to tell you. You want Mason in jail because that is his natural habitat. And when he's arrested, you want to kick up your heels for joy. And don't give me any nonsense about Samantha missing her father because she couldn't pick him out in a crowd. She's much better out without him. Do you know what this looks like? The new DA can't mobilize to stop a rapist who is terrorizing the city because some PMS attack has a harassing her old boyfriend! Oh, people don't think anything of the kind. Look, you have suffered enough at the hands of that man just as much as anyone else. And Mason and Gina are going to get exactly what they deserve, and so will Cece, if we're lucky. You do your job superbly well, and you know that. If you're lonely, it's because you're miserable. And if you're miserable, it's because you don't know how to dress. You're right. That's the answer. Why didn't I think of that? Now, I'm not being trivial. Flippant, yes, because I happen to think you're a wonderful catch. All you have to do is look Catchable. Oh, I know what you're going to say, Augusta, I don't need a man in my life, but I beg to differ with you. I think that you have learned that people are meant to live together, not just with bookshelves. Now, what happened? You picked a dud, so welcome to the human race. This time, you're going to look for someone who loves you more than you love them, because that is the lesson to be learned. Because one can always love the other one more than the other one can back. Now, what you want to be is on the receiving end. What? Maybe I found someone. Found whom? And maybe it turned out that I'm just as bad for him as Mason is for me. So, what does that do for you, Mary? These are my favorite flowers, too, Scott. Would anybody like some wine? 
glass of wine, maybe, and I've, I've got chips and I made dip last night. It's always better the second day. Yeah, sounds, sounds great. 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 I'll here, I'll right I uh, got a corkscrew. Let me help you. It's a beautiful vase, Scott. You said I have no taste. I never said that. Are you mad because I never give you flowers? You do give me flowers, and I'm not mad. Is it because I was late? Scott, will you stop, or you... I'm gonna get mad. Well, we can't have that. You don't have to justify being nice to Celeste. I didn't. True. It is not all for a Well, I don't know. I was <laughs> checking. Um, Scott, can we put those right over there where you're sitting? Yeah. Celeste, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Let me tell you something. If ever you want food to go anywhere beyond this man, don't give it to him. <laughs> hey, this this right, dip tastes great. I've had this before, huh? Can I ask you guys something? Can yeah. you answer me honestly, please? What? How am I doing at work? You're doing a great job, just really? like Michael said you would. We knew you would. Well, your typing stinks, but you're ten times better than Heather. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to talk about those bills. They do mean it. Heather has told me any number of times what a real godsend you have been to the clinic. Mm. Yeah, I really have had to dip someplace before. What, did you buy the grocery or something? Scott, what food can you get? What? It was your mother's recipe, Scott, okay? Your father gave it to me. I would like to propose a toast. No, 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 no. The first toast is mine, okay? All right. I'd like to propose a toast to my new home, to Father Michael having his room all to himself again, <laughs> and to your new dream house. Here, here. Yeah, we're Cheers. practically down the street. That's right. We're all within minutes. Well, to the old neighborhood and the new neighbors. You may need him someday. No way. That's the day I slit my throat. Oh, don't be such a stiff. You know, if we don't get those memos from Julia, Capital Enterprises may go down the tubes. In which case, Cece will only have to pay through the nose. Of course, she'll probably end up right back here. You know, for obstructing justice. And then you just have to get by however you can. You know, what, whatever it means. And you, you take your friends where you can find them. So instead of using that razor to slit your throat, you might just want to give yourself a nice close shave. You really are a piece of work, you know that? There's nothing you'll draw the line at. Shh. No, I'm telling the truth. Shut I could cut you up into little up. fillets and you'd still be saying, let's make a de deal. What deal? We weren't talking to you, CC. What deal? Gina was saying that she'll I do most I can get anything. those papers from you. You know the documents that Julia has? What document? Oh, don't play stupid with me, Cece. All the information that Julia has on you. I know what it'll cost you, and I can get it for you, and I'll sell it to you for a fraction of the cost. Yes, 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 you are so cunning, aren't you? I wouldn't hire you to boil an egg without the fire department nearby. God, it was so easy to forget that you ever existed in this world. Except for the fact that you have a wonderful young man living under your roof. Don't you mention Brandon's name. He has nothing to do with this. I don't see I can help but mention him. I mean, breaking and entering, attempted robbery of state's evidence, no less. It's the same thing he did. There's no I difference. I can see that you'd probably be gone at least five years. Brandon will be a teenager by then. Need someone to uh, replace you, replace his unfit mother. It wouldn't be you, Cece. Not after Julia gets through with you. Gina, I'm here to take you away. Come on, go going home. Who the hell is this? Someone with better manners than the party to whom I would be speaking if I chose to answer rudeness with rudeness, which I do not. What did he say? Come on, I posted bail. <laughs> Get out of here. The air in here is distinctly sour. If you ever dare to threaten my son again, I promise you. I'll tell them everything I know. I will go all the way. And I know a lot. And I'll tell it to anybody who will listen. You want to tell me what 
the hell she was talking about? I'm talking philosophically. Hypothetically. I've never heard of a woman who hypothetically falls in love. Well, maybe you have now. Anyway, I think your theory is a crock. There's no such thing as this more or less one person loves one, one more than the other and the next day it's the next person's turn or whatever. It sounds like you and Lionel. Touché. I'm sorry. No, you're right. The more I loved him, the less he wanted me to. And when I left, he was all devotion. Shouldn't have to be like that. Are you speaking from experience? I'm not honestly sure if I am or not. Well, about this man who adores you, or did, or does he? What are we talking about men for, anyway? Who cares? I mean it, damn it. I don't need someone to, to sweep life's little trials under the rug. You know, I have yet to meet a man who is half as competent as I am. To hell with Henry Higgins. I say, why can't a man be more like a woman? I'll drink to that. Did he make you happy? Never mind. Well, I'm just curious for instructional purposes. He led me to believe that I could be happy with the right person. And that was something that I needed to know very much at that time. Well, tell me about him. What the heck? Let's just bathe in the champagne glow of your birthday and get down to brass tacks. No. That's enough. All right. But I still think he's wonderfully handsome. Father Michael, I mean. If that was the question, and I'm sure that it was, the answer is no. Well, I could let it pass, I suppose. Or let it drop. It's just that I have never known you to lie to me and mean it. Now, why did you keep his medallion? Why did you deny you had it? Now, you don't have to answer. I'll think what I think. It was something that happened once. And I knew that there would never be a next time. And I really don't see why I have to explain any of this to anyone. Well, all right, you don't. I, I didn't plan all this just for you to be angry at me on your birthday, I promise. It seemed like Mason and I had been in combat my entire life. I couldn't think of anything else. I couldn't remember anything else. And then that man in that room he made me watch those. It all seemed like part of the same damn nightmare. I thought I was going to die. And I couldn't think of a reason not to. Except for Samantha. Oh, Julia. But the worst part was going home when I was supposed to just go on. See, that was more frightening to me than anything else. Where was I? Why didn't you tell me? There was nothing to tell. Yes, I kept the medal. And it wasn't so much a reminder of him as it was just a reminder that kindness and goodness and all of the things that I considered to be a necessary condition for life on this earth was still possible. Even though I felt like I had been stripped of, of all of it. Now, I know that sounds like an elevated excuse for something that was very wrong, and I, I do think it, it would be wrong to continue it. Why, when it was something so important between you, even, even once? You don't understand. See, it was more than something. It wasn't just something between us. It was more like separate events. In two very separate lives that just happened to come together at the same place, at the same time. It stood for more than what it was. Well, I just think you're trying to rationalize it because you're afraid of taking a chance. You were right about one thing. I am afraid. I could hurt him so easily without meaning to, and he would let me. Well, I think that's more his decision, don't you? No, I don't. Just get off your high horse.
my horse, will you? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? You are giving me a headache. I'm just saying that that wacko, and that's what he is. It's like Friday the 13th meets Smokey and the Bandit. I'll tell you what. I thank you for bailing me out of jail. I really appreciate it. I'll pay you back as soon as I can. And if I don't, you can always break my legs. But I'd rather spend the rest of my life in a body cast than listen to any more of your good advice. To me insulting. How dare you suggest that I enter money into a personal friendship? If I wanted to return, Gina, I would have picked a much better investment. What do you think your earning power is going to be doing two to five? I'm not going to jail. <sighs> No way Stacy would let them put me in jail. I know too much. He has to have figured that out by now. Pensencora. Pensencora. That DA lady. She may be a loser in love, but she is no slouch in the prosecution department. You know, you keep casting a lot on Sunshine Sunny, and your hair is going to be gray when you get paroled. Look, I don't have any choice. Don't you realize that, Bunny? That is bull. There are other ways of making money besides trying to blackmail your next-door neighbor, Mio Cuore. Yeah, well, threatening Cece is the only way I know of making sure he doesn't take Brandon away from me and of getting my due as his ex-wife. I don't want you swearing at me anymore. I don't care if it is in a foreign language. Who's swearing? I called you sweetheart. Or is that not permitted either? Well, as long as it's not in English and I don't understand what you're saying, I guess it's okay. You're asking me how Gina thinks? What, do I look like a veterinary? I'm asking you what the hell she was talking about. Oh, you know Gina never leave a room without a threat. Mason, I swear, I swear to you, you took that half foot into your confidence and God forbid enlisted her into doing what I asked you to do. How, how do you know she didn't just see something all by her half wit self? Now, she had those memos in her hand from what I was told. How do you know she didn't read them? How do you know she hadn't had them copied and was just bringing them back? How would she know they even existed? That's what I would like to know. What was she doing there? Why did she want them? Will you use your head for something besides a bullhorn? My point is, if Gina gets and keeps her paws on those memos, she's got you right where she wants you. And any money that you would have had to shell out to those oil rig workers' families will go under Gina's mattress. Plus, she can shut you up whenever she wants to. So if I were you, I would resist the impulse to rattle her chain until you know exactly what she knows. Does that make sense? I'll tell you what doesn't make sense. Why is it you can't accomplish one single task without bail and reinforcement standing by? Well, maybe I'm not a natural-born thief. Huh? Maybe you could do it better. Keep your voice down. Do you remember where you are? Yeah, do you remember why I'm here? It's your butt that needs saving, not mine. That's the only reason why I'm here. A little gratitude would be appreciated. For what? For putting me even in a worse position? Look, did you come here to bail me out, or did you come here to interview me to see if I've earned it? Now, I don't know about you, but I plan on eating supper at home. Of course, I could always sing for it, like Gina. So it's your turn to try to muscle me? Good night, Mason. Just stating the facts, Dad. You need me. And people who need people need to be nice to the people they need. Augusta. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, would you rather me leave, leave you alone? Oh, no, no, I, I don't want to drive you out of your own church, Father. Oh, that's what the chapel's for. If you want to pray, I'm glad you do. Oh, Father, I have been away from my faith for so many years. Well, it seems very clear to me that it never deserted you. Oh, I, I guess I'm just like a lot of those people that I had such contempt for, devoid of any religious thought unless it was something they needed. Well, not for myself. I'm not that much of a, an egoist. But I do believe that you can ask God to help someone who is truly forgiving. Someone who always thinks of others before herself. Someone who would do anything for her friends or her child. Julia? Oh. Well, then you see her the same way I do. Father, she is so alone and so unhappy. Not that she'd ever admit to it. It, it, it practically broke my heart today when I tried to give her some semblance of a birthday party, and there we were together. Today to is Julia's birthday? 
Oh, there I go. Please, don't ever tell her I told you that. You know she doesn't like people to feel sorry for her. Say she bad. Come una bottiglia di latte. Did you get that from some opera or something? I think so. It means you're as beautiful as a bottle of milk. Oh. Well, just what I figured. What? Two of you would be here snuggling up to each other. When you come in and bail only one of us out, the reason's not hard to figure. Why should I throw away good money on you? That's like paying the Pentagon 10 G's for a coffee maker. What are you complaining about, Sonny? It'll be a good write-off for Cece. I don't like all this stuff that's been going on behind my back. Listen, rump roast. Ain't nothing going on. And if it's going on behind your back, that's because that's all you are, is one big, dumb backside. Listen to me, you oily little spaghetti. Who are you calling something? greasy bacon brain? Wait a minute, you guys. Just cool it. Oh, fine. Fine. If you want to let this squatty little operator ooze you out of your pantyhose, go right ahead. Uh, see, the green-eyed monster took a bite right out of your chaps, cop. I can't listen to any more of this. Uh, that's he's because jealous, you're jealous, that's all. Of what? Why don't you tell us? Stop thinking about you. That's why I brought these for you. I can just hear you right now, Mama. I know. It's no excuse, Celeste. I know. But, um, I'm living here now. And I got this beautiful little apartment and I got a really good job. So I'm going to bring you flowers now all the time. be honest about this anyway, you know. The flowers came from Scotty. You remember him, right? Well, unfortunately, that relationship didn't quite work out. Mom. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just taking a shortcut from the house to the clinic. Well, it's all right. I uh, guess I can't get away with anything. You're not mad at me for giving away your flowers, are you? No. No, I'm not. I meant to ask you earlier, but, um, you didn't pick them here like you used to, did you? <laughs> no, no, they don't seem to grow here anymore. I guess they have a lazier gardener these days. That's a new thing, you know, you have to buy your own flowers now. Yeah. It was really sweet of you to do that, Scotty. My father's buried here, too. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I seem to be coming here a lot these days. I can talk to him so much easier now. It really makes you wonder. I never had that problem. With my mother, I mean, there wasn't anything I couldn't tell her. Now I'm glad she can't ask. I'm sorry, Celeste. I never got a chance to tell you that. You sent a mask card, Scott. You sent it back. <laughs> the mask got said anyway. I did a lot of stupid things, Scotty. <laughs> Funny thing about it is, once you do the first wrong thing, the rest of them are just waiting right outside your door. Knock, 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 to come walking right through your life, you know? I mean, getting married? Now, that was a really bright idea, right? I just wish I would have, I don't know, stuck around here and maybe done something useful. Something normal. Yeah. Well, what's normal, right? You. You're normal. Now I'm just as big a jerk as I ever was. No. Sometimes it seems like the things that you missed out on just 
I don't know, it got misplaced somehow, you know? Keep looking for him. It's getting dark. Look, why don't... Why don't you walk with me back to the clinic? I'll give you a ride home. Sure. How's the birthday? Oh, who told you? Uh, didn't you tell me once? Augusta. It was accidental. I just happened to see her and she let it slip. Not as accidental as a coronary bypass. What? You're not going to get angry with her. Come in. So I hope you're going to do something special on your day. Yes, I'm going to burn the house down with me in it. And I saw that too. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to get one of my assistants to take the case. Since when? Since the press has had enough fun making me out to be this castrating female going after the jugular of the father of her own child. You know, this is very important to Scott. What are you going to say to him when CeCe's lawyers make mush out of some fresh-faced substitute for you? And the other families, I know. You're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Mason's good as an attorney. Yeah, and you're his match. I don't want to be as anything, certainly not his downfall. Look, this isn't about fighting him. This is about what you're fighting for. Well, it's easier to be right than it is to do right. And nobody knows that better than I do. All right, fine. If you want to quit, do whatever you want. You are not going to make me the prize and the referee in this fight. And if I thought my last choice in the world was between the two of you, I'd shoot myself. I don't blame you, Miyakori. Hey, Pagliacci, don't you realize you just got insulted? No, you've just been insulted because that's all you know. I have just been reminded that a gentleman does not behave like a moose in a lady's living room. Oh, kiss my corns. This continental Casanova crap makes me puke. Sonny, will you stop it? I'm so tired of this chip you wear on your shoulder. Yeah, and I've had it with you siding with him all the time, too. You're always trying to figure out some way to elbow me out. Out of what? Believe me, whatever you're in is a club I don't even want to belong to. Don't you think you have enough mental problems, Sonny, without adding paranoia to them? Why else would the two of you be walking out of Central Lockup arm in arm? You know, this used to be our project. Just ours alone, just the two of us. Whatever happened to that, Gina? We were never in this together, Sonny. It was a business venture. You were in it for yourself, and I was in it for myself. Well, why didn't you say that before? Well, where are you going? Oh, I'm not going, darling. I'm already gone. Remember this one? It reminds me of uh, drinking beer and playing pinball. <laughs> Not me. Me neither, really. I mean, actually, if you want to know the truth, it kind of ticks me off. Really? How come? I don't know. <laughs> I'm nuts, I guess. No, really. How, why? I mean, is it because of me? No. No, I, I'm glad you brought that up, too, because I don't want you to think in any way that I'm mad at you, Scotty. It's just that... I don't like listening to it because then I have to compare what I used to think I was going to turn out to be to what I am right now, right here, sitting in this passenger seat. You turned out exactly like I imagined you would. Give or take this or that. <laughs> No, it's not true, you know. It's just like Sister Alberti used to say all the time. I'm not living up to my potential. I'm not, honest to God, I'm not. Oh, come on, who does? I guess you have to keep some potential in reserve, right? Yeah. I think this is going to be your year, Celeste. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I'm going to really try hard. And I really want to shine, you know? You, too. I mean, you have lots of potential. Or do you think that you've already used it all up? <laughs> no, 
No, I just... I just made a lot of adjustments, you know? Things that I want. Um, things that I wanted, well, still want, actually, but... And that I can still get, but... Not exactly the way that I wanted to. Basically, I disappoint myself a lot. <laughs> you know, there are things that I let pass now that... I would have raised hell about ten years ago. I guess you get tired of always trying to fix everything. So you just bite off a little bit at a time and you just handle whatever you can. Mm. I'm still preachy. <laughs> You're not the last one to accuse me of that. Oh, but Scotty, don't ever stop trying to fix things. I mean, back then, I, I didn't realize how badly they needed it. I didn't have fixing up a house in mind. I think you did. I'm gonna say goodnight, okay? Thanks for the ride home. Uh, let me walk you in. No, no, no. It's all right, really. Good night. Yeah, good night. Let you do this. Give me back my jack. To run after that ungrateful hick? Never. I would rather see my poor mother's grave covered in garbage. Me dispiace, mom. That ungrateful hick is the only way I have of keeping Cece in his place and away from my family. The only way you had, Gina. God gave you a brain. Use it for something else besides trying to second guess that psycho slabola. Is this the only plan you've ever dreamed up? I wager not. Believe in yourself, Gina. Use your powers of machination. There are other plans. Better plans. Bigger plans. Sensi limite! Come you'll so. How can he walk out on me like that? Exactly. He'll never find another like you. Another like what? Anything. You name it. Well, we were only partners anyway. Great men and great women draw love and labor in the same breath. Is that Italian? I just made it up. Well, do you know anything in Italian that might fit this situation? C'è che non sono mai più felice che quando loro sono assieme e non lo sono. What does that mean? Oh, it's very deep. My little world is so small. It's a narrow little thing, like I live in a shoe or something. I mean, there's so many incomprehensible things out there I never even think about. And you are the most incomprehensible of all. Mia Piago, oh, Mia Congilio, Mia Lucielo. Honey, the world is calling. But should we answer? Mia, Mia Cuore. not have my derringer, but Dom Perignon can be just as deadly. Who let you out of jail? Guess. Go ahead and frisk me if you want. I'm not breaking any laws. There should be one made to forbid you from coming 500 feet of this house. My intentions are honorable. You have no intentions, just schemes. And don't tell me you're here to wish Julia a happy birthday. What if I am? Mason, what's happened to you? You used to be at least interesting. What you lacked in character, you made up for in wit, but now your IQ is the same as your inseam, or maybe I never noticed before. I'm here to see my daughter. Oh, Mason, please. You are here to steal those papers, which you obviously think my sister would have been stupid enough to leave in the same place after your last two miserable attempts. Why don't you go rob a liquor store? It's more your speed. You got a fat face, you know that? Well, at least it's not gracing a wanted poster. Oh, Father, I 
didn't know we had guests. I bet you're not as surprised as I was. Well, luckily, I stopped off and got a little extra champagne. Would you like a glass? I, I know you're off duty. Well, thank you. Yes, that would be very nice. Fine, good. I'll, I'll take care of it. She really does like to take care of you. Augusta and I are going to have a little talk. Now, don't say that you won't take it, because I uh, didn't have to pay anything for it. It was given to me, all right, as uh, rent by the people that did the American Indians craft show in half last month. And I knew that I wasn't going to wear it, so. This is hammered silver. I haven't seen one of these since I moved from Arizona. How did you know? Well, I knew that I wanted to give it to you, but I, I didn't know exactly the occasion. It's called a necklace of wisdom. Originally, the people that wore it were given the power to see in the dark because of an inner light. See. So it's practical, too. Yeah. Thank you. Happy birthday. Tonight, on Ronald Reagan's last day in office, we'll look and listen to the sights and sounds of the Ronald Reagan years. I'm Tom Brokaw. Join me on NBC Nightly News from Washington.